This is the domain of a peculiar creature. Not tall, not mighty, without weapons, without a voice, yet more successful than any species that has ever walked this planet. They, with over 14,000 species, not only survive, but also thrive, expand, and persist for over 150 million years. And in that microscopic world, where the seeds of life are sown, Messer Laboriosus and Messer Structor continue to write a story spanning millions of years with the very rhythm of their steps. An industrious farmer always on the move or a quiet, organized architect. Who do you think is smarter? Who is more efficient? Which species is more successful? Which species will survive longer if the world changes? Welcome back to Antrek. I once raised two colonies, Laboriosus and Structor, for half a year. You can check it out right here. And this one too. So many fascinating things have already happened. Now let's take a closer look at how this tiny creature manages to survive harsh conditions and still grow into such a powerful force of nature. Like other ant species, queen ants of both the Structor and Laboriosus varieties seek romance with male ants in the air after rain. Afterward, the males die, and the queens in their grief chew off their wings and seclude themselves in the deepest, darkest places. They painfully shed their wings to conserve energy, and indeed, they no longer need them to establish their empires. The first batch of their offspring is usually around 5 to 15 eggs. Which species will build its empire faster? Before we answer that, let's see which species has the bigger queen. The queen of Laboriosus averages 12 to 14 millimeters in length and will lay her eggs 5 to 7 days after mating. Both of our queens will continue laying eggs continuously for 10 to 13 consecutive years. The larger Laboriosus starts laying its first clutch later. The smaller Structor begins laying its first clutch sooner. After about 10 days, the eggs from both species, each only around 0.5 millimeters, hatched into larvae. At this stage, they can move slightly and start feeding, but they still can't walk. Their size is roughly the same for both species, ranging from 1.5 to 2 millimeters. Once they pupate, their bodies grow to about 3 to 4 millimeters in length. After one month, the first worker ants of Laboriosus were born. They're still weak and curious about everything around them. Look at them, like tiny little babies, but don't underestimate them. Their instincts tell them to protect and care for their queen at all costs, a child fully devoted to its mother. Meanwhile, the first structure workers actually hatched a day earlier. They came out sooner, but they're noticeably smaller. Looks like they'll need to eat a bit more if they want to grow as big and strong as their laboriosus cousins. As you can see, these two species look almost identical in size and shape, like true sisters. So what sets them apart? In ideal conditions, ant colonies thrive. But nature doesn't always cooperate. Climate change is making temperatures more unpredictable. Messer ants prefer hot, dry weather. Below 20 degrees Celsius, their metabolism slows. The structure queen stops laying eggs, and that's dangerous. Laboriosus queens do the same, but their workers still go out unless it's too cold. But what happens when it drops below 16 degrees Celsius? Can the colony adapt, or will it collapse? Unpredictable weather and sudden rainstorms cause temperatures to drop and humidity to spike. My structure colony responded by retreating into the nest, where it's warmer and much safer than the outside. This is where they care for their larvae and eggs. The larvae are kept separate from the eggs because leftover food can grow mold, and that could be deadly for the eggs. The Laboriosus colony doesn't overthink it. Look at this. Everything's grouped in one spot for easier care. Honestly, I think it makes things simpler. But what do you think? Larvae need a certain amount of protein to grow. So even though they're seed eaters, they still have to hunt. 
The structure colony is cautious by nature. They won't attack unless there's a real threat. Escaping and conserving energy is always the top priority. But when an intruder enters the nest, it's a whole different story. Alarm pheromones are released, and the result is exactly what you'd expect. No one gets near the larvae or the queen. Laboriosis ants attack any intruder without hesitation. Though they eat seeds, they still hunt small prey for the queen and larvae. One worker even stuffed a larva inside a cockroach. Brutal! Who knew a seed-eating species could be so aggressive and crave meat like that? Structor is cautious and prioritizes safety. Laboriosis is aggressive, efficient, and brutal when hunting. In the wild, they usually eat their prey right after the hunt. But now, with the weather colder than they can handle, they have to rush back to the nest. That's the safest place to be right now. So, let's take a look inside. What makes each nest different? The Laboriosis colony doesn't build a huge nest, but their organization is tight and impressively structured. The queen starts digging her nest just days after mating, creating a space to lay her eggs. Once the first workers are born, they take over and begin expanding the nest, adding a seed storage chamber within the first month. After four months, the colony grows stronger and builds trash chambers and more brood rooms. And after a full year, the nest might reach up to 40 separate rooms. Throughout all of this, they always dig the queen's chamber in the deepest part of the nest. Smart and cautious, right? The nest isn't massive, but their division of labor and organization is incredibly well structured. The structure colony, on the other hand, builds a much larger nest compared to most ant species. Just like Laboriosis, it takes them about a year to complete it. And when it comes to scale, even humanity's greatest architectural feats, the Great Wall, Angkor Wat, the pyramids, would have to be combined just to match the complexity of the home built by these tiny creatures. After two months, seed and larva rooms are added. By month four, resting areas and trash chambers. After a year, up to 50 chambers. It's equal to five football fields combined. Pretty incredible. So we can clearly see that the Laboriosis colony builds a smaller nest, but with a much tighter, more organized layout compared to structure. Each colony has its own strengths. And here's a cool fact. In Messer species, seed storage chambers can make up nearly 40% of the entire nest. For the Laboriosis colony, protein is just a small part of their diet. Their main food source is seeds, so it's the job of the younger workers to gather as many as possible. They store tons of seeds as backup for tough times. Turning them into ant bread takes a surprisingly smart process. It's their way of surviving bad weather and food shortages. Smart strategy, strong empire. The Structor Empire is similar. They're strict seed eaters and rarely hunt. They store even more than Laboriosis, with over 40% of the nest for seeds. But unlike Laboriosis, they skip complex processing and just eat them as is. When it comes to collecting and processing seeds, they're pretty similar. But what happens when a predator shows up? Laboriosis keeps guards posted even in harsh conditions. Fights are almost guaranteed, but these ants are always ready to strike back. When an intruder is detected, Laboriosis patrols instantly release alarm pheromones to alert the entire colony. An ant quickly rushes in to confront the threat, but on its own, there's not much it can do. But when the whole colony joins, they swarm and drive the intruder out with sheer numbers. Laboriosis can quickly drive out and overwhelm intruders, but structure is different. They avoid conflict, but once the enemy breaches the nest, everything changes. Inside, workers evacuate to protect the brood and queen.
While above, tiny warriors close in on the threat and attack with their lives. At all costs, the intruder must be expelled. No matter how strong, nothing can withstand these suicide defenders. Giving their lives to protect the colony, that's how Structor fights. Laboriosis stops the attack before it even begins. So what do you think? Mesor Laboriosus and Mesor Structor are two harvester ant species representing contrasting survival strategies. Laboriosus are slightly larger in size, develop slowly, reproduce less, and have a tight, efficient nest organization. They are aggressive and brutal hunters with high endurance, but they are difficult to keep in artificial environments. On the other hand, Structor reproduce quickly, are highly productive, develop rapidly, and adapt easily. Although they hunt less and have a less streamlined organization, they store more seeds and build larger nests. In summary, Laboriosus pursue a sustainable strategy, stable and resilient, while Structor choose a path of rapid, flexible growth to dominate their environment. Low temperatures are harsh for Messerants. Laboriosus fights with fury. Structor survives with grit. But the cold stopped both queens from laying eggs and their colonies weakened. Still, I believe they'll adapt and reclaim their tiny world. Like what you saw? Hit subscribe and drop your favorite part in the comments.